Karen Hodgins, creative gem with Geometry Family Mount High, and in this video, I'm going to share with you a community project that I did at my last Family Mount High event where we created a huge Sarapinski pyramid. And what I love about this project is that everybody's personality is represented in that. How beautiful is that? Okay, so I'm going to start by um, describing the project and then I'm going to get a little bit into the background and the math and then I'm going to end with something sweet. Okay, so when I do these community building projects at a Family Mount Hunt event, um, I set up a whole station just for the, the project. Um, I like to have enough seating for between 15 and 20 participants to comfortably be able to do the activity. Um, okay, so the materials that you're going to need are the, um, the nets, the two-dimensional representations of the three-dimensional tetrahedron that they're going to be um, making. Um, you can find the PDF of this on our website at familymountlight.com under the resources section. Um, and I recommend that when you um, make copies of these, you make them on cardstock because it's gonna be so much easier for them to turn these into the tetrahedrons. Now, when I put these um, on the table at the station, I cut them, you can see that there's two on the page there. Um, I cut them in half like this, and then I spread these out and then everybody can just get their own um, to work on. Okay, so you'll need the nets, you'll need, um, a hot glue gun and I always have a um, backup hot glue gun just in case something happens to the first one. Um, depending on the situation, the room that you're in, you may need an uh, extension cord. You'll need waxed paper, um, clear tape. I like to put at least 10 of these um, out on the table. You're going to need um, the hot glue or the glue for the hot glue gun. Um, a whole bunch of colorful uh, pens. I like to use Sharpies because they're really colorful and um, they, also the, uh, they also don't dry out, tend to dry out as quickly as some of the other pens. You'll also need some rulers, ballpoint pen, and this is important that it's a ballpoint pen. You want it to be nice and firm at the tip. And um, scissors, and again, um, as many scissors as you're going to have um, uh, participants at that station. Um, the other thing I have made, because this is a very, very popular um, station, is I made these little um, table tents. And the directions for um, completing the project are on the table tents. Now you are going to have um, a station facilitator at this table, and um, they're going to be helping participants um, with the project, but it does tend to get really busy, and so um, for those people who arrive at the table and the station facilitator may not be ready, these um, these table tents serve as a guide. So again, you can find a PDF to this on our website under the resources section. Okay, so um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the hot glue gun. When I do my family mount height events, um, I always have uh, um, students run the station. So fifth graders or up are running the stations. Um, and they do, I love that, and they do really step up and they do a phenomenal job. For this station, um, and I, I have at least one student per station, um, for this station you need to have at least two people because one person is going to be the person going and helping people should they need it. Um, and the other person is going to be in charge of that hot glue gun. Okay, um, I have used hot glue guns in a classroom setting with as many as 25 students and everything has been fine. It's really all about just um, setting up the stage for it and making the expectations really clear. So you're going to choose someone that you know can handle a hot glue gun and at your family math on event that student is going to be totally responsible for that. They're the only ones allowed to touch the hot glue gun. If for some reason they need to leave the station, they unplug the hot glue gun, they put it aside so nobody else can touch it um, and so forth. I train this person in advance as well because they're going to be putting these little tetrahedrons together and we'll get to that in a second and they're going to need um, practice in doing that. Um, so uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of training involved in advance. Okay, so now I'm just going to take you through the steps of creating, um, I'm going to go down the, uh, um, the table tent here. And the first step is to color their, their uh, tetrahedron or their net. So they're going to take this and they're going to use all those great pens and they're going to just color in all over that. Um, after, they, after they've colored it in, they're going to cut the perimeter, so the outside of their net. Okay. 
Um, at that point, they're going to use that ballpoint pen I was talking about earlier and the ruler because they're going to trace. Let me show you on this one here. I'm actually going to do the rest of this in um, these orange um, tetrahedrons because I had a whole bunch of these left over after another project that I did. So I'm going to be using these and I made all of my samples um, that I'll be sharing with you out of this. Okay, so once they've cut it out like that, they're going to take the ruler and they're going to score the lines, okay? They're going to um, trace those lines just like this that you see, all those lines that they see. Because what's going to happen is it's going to make it, I've already scored this, it's practically at that point going to fold itself. See how super easy that was to fold? So then once they're all scored, they just go right along those lines. And of course, the real little guys, they've got mom or dad helping them um, do this. Okay, so once they have everything folded, that was so easy. Okay, they're now going to take that clear tape and the tabs go on the inside. And they'll figure that out because they'll have their design on here. And if the tabs go on the outside, it's going to cover up their design. But then they're going to take that and they're, they're going to tape it so that they end up with something that looks like this. Of course, theirs would be colored in, but that's basically the gist of it. Now, this is a tetrahedron. Anytime you hear hedron um, in geometry, you know it's going to be three dimensions, length, width, and height. If you hear gone, polygon, like an octagon or a hexagon, that's in two dimensions. But this is a tetrahedron, and it's made up of triangles, four of them, that make the faces of, um, of the polygon. Okay. Um, and now what they're going to do is they're going to give this to the um, station facilitator, the one who's in charge of the hot glue gun, uh, because the station facilitator then is going to turn this into these little mini um, tetrahedrons. I'll get to that in a second. Now, um, there are times when, um, when a student or even a parent um, decide that they want to keep their little uh, tetrahedron, and that's perfectly fine. They can take those home with them, but mostly um, they will hand it in and, um, and then they get to watch this thing grow. I do like to have a few um, mini ones like this already available for people to look at so that they can get an idea in the beginning of what it is that this little thing is going to um, become. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you and show you how to glue this. This is where the wax paper comes in because your hot glue gun person is going to then take three of these tetrahedrons and place them like this on the wax paper. Can you see that? Okay, in that configuration. Let me flip it over so you can see what it looks like on the underside, like that. Okay, in that configuration. And this is the easy part, because at this point, they're just gonna take the hot glue, let's see if this is ready, and they're just going to glue, this is already glued, but I'll add a little more here. They're just gonna glue the vertices, just like that. Okay, it doesn't take too much glue, but the reason why you practice with them in advance is so that they can see exactly how much. Sometimes they put too little, and then it doesn't, it doesn't hold very well. And you don't want to use too much either. Okay, so they're going to do that on those um, vertices like that, and that's the easy part. Now, I would let that sit for like a minute and dry before they do the next part, which is to put the final tetrahedron on the top like this. Now, this can be tricky. You may want to have um, two people do this where one person holds it and the other one holds it up here near the top and the other person glue, hot glue guns it. But it's not really necessary, especially if your hot glue gunner has had practice. So um, I like to glue two of the vertices at one time and then I hold it there. I hold it there for you know, 30, 40, 50 seconds before I do that third one. Now, it's not going to be perfect. You're not going to get them exactly, I mean, it would be really nice if we get them exactly on those um, tips like that, but it's not going to happen that way just because everybody, you know, folds it and creases and tapes it a little bit differently, and it's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. You'll see in the final one um, that it works out just fine. Um, you're going to need to tell your hot glue gunner that they're going to have to um, exercise a little patience here because holding it, you know, is steady can, um, you know, takes a little bit of, well, it takes patience. Okay, so when that is done, oh, and by the way, this comes super easily off the, um, the wax paper. So when, when they're all done like that at the end, you'll just peel them right off the wax paper. See how easily that came off? Okay. 
Um, so when they're done, you're going to end up with this. Okay. Now, it took four little tetrahedrons to make this next size tetrahedron. So how many of these tetrahedrons do you think it's going to take to make the next size tetrahedron? It turns out it takes four to make the next size tetrahedron. Okay, and so this is the next part I'm going to show you. You're going to get some wax paper again. I don't have the wax paper on this one, but um, you see how I set that up there? Okay, you've got those um, three tetrahedrons just like that. And again, it's on the wax paper. Super easy. You just hot glue gun that. And then you're going to take this one and it's going to go on the top. You're going to repeat it, except it's just a little bit larger. Okay, and at that point you'll end up with this. Now, how many of these do you think it's going to take to make the next size up? And if you guessed four, you're right. It takes four of these to go to the next level. And that's what we've got right here, that next um, level. Um, what I love about um, the, um, this project is that it doesn't matter how many participants you have at your family math hunt event. You are going to create a Sierpinski, um triangle um, because of something called self-similarity. And this is a great segue into the, a little bit of background and a little bit of the, um, the math. So what we've created here, um, actually this, this 3D um, pyramid is, is the 3D version of the Sierpinski Triangle. And the Sierpinski Triangle was named after um, a Polish mathematician called Waha um, Sierpinski. And uh, here it is, the Sierpinski um, Triangle. Um, it's actually um, a fractal, um, and it describes, he described the self-similarity in this. Um, and what a um, fractal is, is a geometric construction made up of patterns. But what's really cool about those patterns is that they are little replicas of the larger version. Um, so you can see here that here's the large version, right? And then half that width is this version, is this triangle right in here, and then half that width is this one, and half of that is this one, and it keeps going on um, infinitely smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, and that's where the self-similarity comes in, those little replicas. I'm actually going to be doing um, this activity, the Sierpinski Triangle, at an upcoming Family Math Night event where participants are going to create their own little Sierpinski Triangles. So I'm going to put these together to create a huge Sierpinski Triangle. So um, watch for that video to come out. I'm going to be talking about um, fractals, um, fractal geometry, um, the father of fractal geometry, which is Benoit Mandelbrot. I will talk about some chaos theory and lots of other really good stuff. So stay tuned for that one. Okay, but back to our pyramid. So the self-similarity in our pyramid is, okay, here's the large pyramid, right? And then you have the next size version, and then you have the next size version, and then you have the next size, size version, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, we built this going out, um, but it's the same idea of that self-similarity. Um, what's nice about this is that when you're done with it, um, you can hang it in the office, it looks beautiful, but you can also use it next year when you're promoting a family math night event. Um, you can remind people of the fun that they had doing this, and then it, will, um, it also draws in new people um, to your event because they get excited about seeing that and want to participate in something similar to that um, as well. I said I'd end on something sweet, and it was serendipity that a couple of days before um, this event where we made the Sierpinski Triangle, I was picking up supplies, and in the front office, they had a whole bowl of these little cute tetrahedrons. Can you see that? Okay, and inside these tetrahedrons are little jelly bellies. So wouldn't it be fun if everybody at your station um, who created their little tetrahedron would walk away with something super sweet? Okay, really fun. Um, this is a great project, and the best part of this project is that everybody had a hand in making it. So, enjoy.